first ban, I think. And Kilgruff is a decent ban. Scary late game. If he's able to farm and you're able to create space for him. I'm Alice coming out here. Yeah, Alice. A strong support along with the team. -y. We've seen them in every single game, I believe, that we've casted together. On one side, mm -hmm. there's the Alice. On the other side, there's the team. -y. Another pattern that we can observe is the Superman ban. In 100% of the games we've cast today, we've seen Superman being banned away. Yeah, nobody wants to deal with Superman. Just get him out of there. Yep. He, They're going and to he's even, he was even nerfed on the last patch. <clears throat> the nerf is not substantial enough to deter teams from banning him every single game. Thankfully for these teams, they still have great initiators left, such as Malak and Lubu, both of which were picked up by Team Bren Esports. Do you think they'll be able to protect the Tillin alongside the team to allow them to have a really strong team composition? Oh yeah, I think the Zephys, if you're gonna go dive, I think the Violet, if you're gonna go ADC, is what they're gonna lock in there. Um, you either have to choose to outrange the Lindus or to just get on top of her. Um, and they're going to opt to outrange her. They do have the stuns and the being a bro to keep the the Violet alive. And oh, we talked about it last game, the how I like the flicker on the team. We're going to see it here. Um, hopefully we get to see it offensively, but it is a great defensive item on the team as well. The heal not nearly as important on that, in my opinion. I really like the flicker on the Tillin, because even though he has a dash in his toolkit, it's good to have two dashes, because if you use your ability, your natural ability dash, in, to put yourself in a dangerous situation, you can always flicker out of the situation and save your life. It's a really wise decision by the Tillin player, because it allows them more versatility in their strategy. Yeah, and uh, again, we see the Ardren. Uh, I'm assuming it's in response to the Malik. They'll probably lane up against each other. Uh, it seems to be a decent counter, honestly. You're not really going to beat the Malik, so you might as well be able just to trade evenly with them. And I think that's kind of what the Ardwin provides. Absolutely. Speaking of picks that may have been a counter, we need to talk about the Violet. For a long time, especially in the European region, Violet reigns supreme as one of the most oppressive heroes in the entire game. She has been nerfed over and over again. Now she's not as good, but we see her once more here. Her outstanding range will allow her to outrange Lidness, as you mentioned earlier, and perhaps be the deciding factor in team fights in the late game. Yeah, it's always interesting me to see uh, whether the Violets choose to go the Crit Arcana or the Pen Arcana. It just depends on how much praying you like to do to RN Jesus, I suppose. <laughs> As someone who has almost become a professional Hearthstone player, I am well acquainted with with praying to RN Jesus, and I hope it turns out well for Ren Esports if they did opt to take the Critical Strike runes for Violet. Uh, the other big thing that <clears throat> both teams need to look out for is fighting to their team potential. Violet really excels in fighting in the lane fighting around the towers, whereas Lindus likes to be in the jungle, uh, a little more evasive and uh, elusive, using those bushes to give her the speed boost. Lindus is definitely one of the most elusive heroes in the entire game, but Violet also can get away out of difficult situations with her tactical fire. That dash has such a low cooldown and allows her so much flexibility with the increased range of the AoE damage, and we see that right here as they go for the Might Golem, invading the jungle. Perhaps Arden, Arden will not be able to escape this. It looks like he will, but the Might Golem has been handed over to Bren Esports. Nah, Bren Esports is on paper the better team, and they just came out asserting their dominance there. You're not going to expect the team with the Violet to run an invade, especially level 1, and <laughs> they, they just went up there. They had Lubu take their red even. Uh, the, the Lucius, I guess we're going to call him, or Jex, they were not expecting that whatsoever. You could say that was a, a violent play, but I'm going to <laughs> stop making horrible play, uh, horrible funds this or, this game because it's going to be an exciting one. You mentioned that Bren Esports is ostensibly the better team in this matchup, but I wouldn't discount uh, G3X loses out just yet. They have a strong composition. The Lidness is debatably the better marksman in the meta than Violet, and we could see them coming ahead in team fights later on. 
yeah, if they're able to sustain through this early game and get a tower or two, even a dragon, um, I think their team fight is a little better. Uh, the Brent Esports really have their lineup built around Violet and Violet getting a lot of gold and farm. Currently, there's a slight bug. We are dealing with some technical issues, but we will continue soon. We also need to talk about the way they have structured their team, the J3X Lucis team, around Alice's Sunshine. When she hits the stun, Kali can follow up with her ultimate and hit it. That ultimate can do immense damage, but it often misses because of its unique way of uh, range. But with uh, the CC provided by the Alice, we could see a lot of damage coming in from Lucis. Yeah, the... The combo potential is huge. They just have to have the synergy to, to mesh with it. Uh, Linus also provides a slow with her snare, so and Arduin for that fact. Uh, yeah, lots of slows. So they, like you said, their team synergy is really lined up nicely to not only mesh with the, the Linus but the Kali as well. They just need to be able to repel potential offensive pushes made by Bren Esports because the Malak has the shock. They have the Violet with a tactical fire, and if Lubu is able to penetrate your defenses, you're going to have a hard time protecting your Lidness and your Kali from the oncoming damage. Therefore, I think that if Lucis want to win this game, they need to be really careful around protecting their glass cannons. Yeah, Brendan Esports has to be decisive when this Lubu goes in. Um, if he even goes in, they could just leave him the split push whenever the Xenial leaves. Uh, that is an option as well. It, uh, the Jex Lucis doesn't have that much split push potential, so they're really focusing on their team fight. Um, they're kind of having all of their eggs in that basket. <clears throat> Essentially, that's the only way you can counter the Xenial. If you have a, a good split pusher, like Lubu, then Xenial cannot afford to use his ultimate to join his allies in a team fight because you're going to lose a lot of turrets if you do so. And now we're getting back into the game. The pause has finally finished, or has it? We see another pause made by the spectator. And that's exactly why they banned the Kilgroth in the beginning. Uh, they knew they wanted the Xenial, and they didn't want... Kilgroth is going to pu punish the Xenial way faster than the Lubu is, so... True, With but... that being said... <clears throat> We are back in true. the action. Go ahead. We are back in the action. That is true. But speaking of Lubu, he is mounting up aggression. The Pudi put is here to help him. Kimi and Lubu will probably get the first blood here. Will they? Yes, they will. First blood given to Bren Esports, facilitated by Lubu, but picked up by Kimi. It's only minute one, and they have already picked up the first kill. And that's another reason that Lubu is so strong. He not only offers that split push potential, but he has that knock up as well. Uh, so you can get those picks. And they're doing a lot of damage to this tower right here. This is going to be huge if they can take this down. And I think they'll be able to get it. They still have pretty much a full minion. Wow. Look at those rotations. Utilizing the Violet with her tactical fire. She's able to siege turret so quickly. And you mentioned how Bren Esports want to assert their dominance. And they're doing so. In minute two, they have gone for the first blood. And they have taken down the first turret. And they're going into the jungle, taking the Sage Golem. They are so quick in, in cementing their dominance. Yeah, they knew they didn't have to take Dragon right there. They weren't quite in position for it. And that blue buff was just looking tasty, and they got it no problems. They now have a 2,000 gold lead. As the other team now gets a pause. Each team is allowed to pause. I believe three minutes is the max for that. This time, Jax are pausing the opposing team. And I can see why. They are probably discussing the best possible strategy to counteract the aggression coming in from Bren Esports. They're not just going for early skirmishes, they're pushing the envelope to the maximum. They're going for objectives, they're going for steals in the jungle, and you need to devise a plan how to stop the ongoing onslaught coming in from Bren Esports. It's going to be difficult to do so. Yeah, at this point they just need to secure their own jungle and uh, take what they can. Um, and they don't really have the position levels or gold to contest this next dragon. They really need to try and trade something for it. Um, but 
They're, the Brennan Esports is in a pretty solid position to just fall back, clear their jungle, and then take the dragon even if they wanted to. They're in no mm. real rush at this point. I echo that. Just look at their levels. They're already level 4 and 5, while Lydnis and especially Kali and Arduin, not Arduin, especially Kali and Xenial rely on their level 4 ultimate to be useful in team fights. When Kali gets this ultimate, when Xenial gets the ultimate, they become a lot more consequential due to their global presence. Xenial can jump in in the fight even if he's on the other side of the map, whereas Kali can use her ultimate to dish out damage from afar, they're unable to utilize those abilities. Consequently, they're not able to contest the Abyssal Dragon. Yeah, like you were saying, uh, Zinniel and even Alice comes online so hard at 4. You need a few heroes that are in between there to help you get to that point. And uh, I just don't know if Arduin is going to be enough here. <laughs> Look at Alice, she is level 2, while Violet and Tolan are level 5. Yeah, and when, like, Violet, or uh, Alice really needs that 4, uh, that silence is huge, it covers such a massive area. Until then, she's just a, a speed boost and a, and a stun. Granted, her stun is extremely relevant if it hits multiple enemies. But it's going to be hard to stay relevant when you face when you're facing against a team that has so much gold, that has so much damage and so much power in the early game. Ren Esports are ready to steamroll and snowball their advantage. Yeah, and uh, it's almost like they knew they were going to pick the Alice because they picked. Violet doesn't like to be stacked on anybody. She likes to be kind of in her own world. Uh, you're going to leave the Malik out front. And the Lubu has plenty of dashes to create his own spacing uh, if they group up, for, just to not group up for the Alice. So no, only a few have, seconds left. Yeah, they're going to get this pause unhappen, whether they're ready or not. It is time to go. Indeed, both teams have had time to contemplate and compare their strategies, decide what to do next. And we see Bren Esports continuing on with the offensive, going into the jungle of uh, Lucis. Yeah, this Arduin is just... Oh, man! He was there for a second, and then he was gone. This is not looking good at all for Jex Lucis here. Deleted. They went into the jungle. Arduin dared to just step a bit close to them, and there he was, deleted completely. They really need to try and not... Overstepping when they don't need to, like this tool in here, being a little aggressive. I, oh, I see here. The Lubu looks to be a little MIA. Yeah, it seems so. But their aggression, even if it seems a bit too overeager, is what makes them so strong in this game. And look at the Violet with the tactical fire going in. Peace Boy not playing that peacefully this game. Showing his dominance. Level 7 already. His damage is overwhelming. They're dropping solo. Yeah, that Violet is making quick work of them. Alice had no mana. Couldn't help at all. And they're just going to clean up the rest of the jungle. Malik it's is plenty... Try to take the abyssal. And they haven't needed to. They have a, <laughs> almost a 3,000 gold lead and no Ooh, destiny. Ooh, Malak. With a sliver of health, evaded death, kited out the skill shots facilitated by the Arduin. Bren Esports have decided to take the abyssal dragon now, or at least attempt to do so. Violet almost single handedly taking it down. Yeah, Timmy had vision of him taking the red. Uh, Jex is just trying to clean up any farm they can. They really can't contest that dragon. Uh, Brent Esports is a point to where they took it without fear at all of anybody stealing it. Uh, they're probably going to clean up the rest of their jungle here and look for another tower. Uh, they'll probably position around mid, hoping to get mid, and if not, they'll look towards the bottom lane after that. Quite likely, but... Jax weren't really in a position to contest that. They know that they are at a gold deficit. They know that their heroes are not as leveled up as their opposition. It's a slippery situation for them. It's almost as if whatever they do, they're going to be at a disadvantage. Yeah, this is a crazy uphill climb. 
But uh, there is always room for error. You never know. We got Dark Slayer spawning in about 30 seconds. You can manage to steal a Dark Slayer. You can extend your gameplay by at least a minute or two. And this fight for the Dark Slayer could prove to be different than the last one, because finally Alice has her ultimate online, Xenial has his ultimate online, which will allow them to be more relevant than these team fights. But Arjun is dropping solo, almost helpless to defend his turret that is being demolished by Violet, and Peace Boy and Leather Goods going in with their abilities. The shock comes in from the Malak, but thankfully for Arjun, he's able to evade death, survives so far, his turret was not as lucky as it fell down. Yeah, this Violet's level 9. Her tactical fire is doing tons of damage at this point. Now she's level 10. Look at the tactical fire, just demolishing Durrit, sieging them effortlessly. How are Jax even going to defend themselves from this? Tulin has opted to skip boots at this point. He feels like the game is fairly under control. The 6,000 gold lead. This has just been a textbook gaming coming out of Brent Esports. Interestingly enough, Violet has zero kills, piloted by Peace Boy. Violet does not have to focus on taking down enemies when she can take down objectives with her tactical fires. She is relying on her allies such as Stolen, who has not taken the boots, who has opted for completely going for damaging items to do damage to enemies, while she just takes down turret after turret. Another turret falls down to Violet, and now they're looking to take down some kills. Yeah, there's really not much they can do at this point. <clears throat> Violet can just slow roll onto the rest of these towers, and that's going to be pretty much a wrap. It's been a beautiful game executed by Brent Esports. And it's not like Jex has played a bad game, either. It's not like we've seen any horrible misplays or anything <laughs> like that. And Brennan Esports can displace, display so much aggression without actually killing enemies. Now they're going to kill someone. Beast Boy gets his first kill with a tactical fire alongside another turret. It's only three kills in minute seven, but they're so aggressive, taking turrets down so quickly. Jacks know that they do not stand a chance. As soon as they get close to the turrets, they get taken down, just like Tuna was taken down when he tried to approach Violet. They're not really able to contest this Dark Slayer as Peace Boy with his tactical the fire is chipping down its HP so quickly. Yeah, this Dark Slayer did not even stand a chance. It made a quick work of it. Quick work indeed. Tulin finally snagged some boots. Do you think we'll see a quick finish to this game, now that they have the Abyssal Dragon buff, they can march down bottom lane, a uh, mid lane, and deal damage with the tactical fire coming in from Beast Boy. Oh, look at that damage, the crit. Uh, if they can somehow catch this Violet out, they might have a chance to hold on, but... Here comes the Malak. The shock going in, getting so much space for his team to just come in and demolish that turret. It's down. Now only members of Jax are left to be annihilated as their entire middle lane has fallen down to the sheer might of Bren Esports. Yeah, and their focus here is very nice. Like, they even did a decent job of clearing their wave there as Jax. They just weren't able to do it nearly fast enough as this Violet... <laughs> <laughs> it's making those towers look like they're nothing. Yeah, it's perplexing how much respect and fear Jax give to Bren Esports. They're not trying to defend their more crucial objectives. They're just letting Bren Esports destroy their turrets without trying to fight for them. I don't think Jax have a chance of winning this game if they keep letting Bren Esports take everything they want for free. The third high ground tower will be taken in a matter of seconds. Yeah, they're not even willing to commit now. When there is no yeah, they... other choice. It's like they don't care. Their entire base is being destroyed. They're dropping like flies one by one as Bernie Sports are cementing their dominance, going in to win this game, going towards an ace. They have taken two kills so far and destroyed every single structure except for the base. And it's likely that the entire game will be closed out in a few seconds as Beast Boy goes in with a tactical fire. Yeah, there aren't any minions in base, but here they come now as we speak of it. If not, if only one lane, they might just reset here. There's no point to push it. You just got all of the inhibitors. You can reset, take a couple buffs, and you just march back down the lanes and end it. What do you think about Jax being so terrified of Ren Esports this entire game? Oh, <laughs> look at oh, this damage coming my. in from Beast Boy. 
And as you were saying that sentence, Lindis got destroyed. But uh, I think, I mean, if you're going to come out and play the game, you got to at least try. I mean, zero to six, you got to make a play somewhere. It just felt like they were just kind of hoping that Brent Esports would mess up horribly somewhere. And a team like this isn't going to just hand over the game. you got to go out and take it from them. I agree, and it may be too late to try now as one hit from Violet takes out half HP from Alice, and with the shot coming in from the Malak, they engage a fight, they're focusing the base, but also members of Jax are dropping one by one. In a few seconds, the base will be destroyed, and it's another game picked up for Brent Esports as they win the final game of today's series. <laughs> and that was pretty textbook Arena of Valor there. Now, if you're <laughs> looking how to play and looking to get into the, the competitive scene, that's how you do it. Know your power spikes, this communicate, and play to your hero's strengths. I absolutely agree. I, I would describe this game with one sentence that you mentioned at the beginning of the game, which is that Bren Esports are showing off their dominance. They did show off their dominance with this quick victory. Yeah, at, at no point in throughout that game did it feel out of their hands. Absolutely, I echo your statement. They had control from start to end. Only one death from Beast Boy. If Beast Boy hadn't died that one time, uh, he definitely would be the MVP, empirically speaking. Now he shares the spot with uh, Kuroki playing Malak, but Beast Boy and Violet, for me at least, was the spotlight of this game. Yeah, awesome positioning, and that's all you really need out of your ADC. 36% of his team's damage and Toolin picking up another 27 um, between the two of them. <laughs> it's a large percentage of their damage. But look at that, 75% and 62% of the team's kills, so the whole team getting involved in pretty much anything, everything there. Yeah, in Peace Boys, 36.7% damage to heroes is even more impressive because he focused on turrets for most of the game. He did not try to kill heroes, he mostly demolished and sieged down those turrets. So the 36.7% the is even more impressive considering how little he focused on heroes. Yeah. That's true, they did take out that set completely, so we can't even see. He had to have most of his damage for the team on that as well. Yeah, I wish we had those statistics in Arena of Valor. Damage dealt to turrets. But that's going to be it for today. Do you have any closing thoughts here, Apathy, before we go? Any shout-outs to follow you on any social medias? Well, first and foremost, it was a pleasure casting with you. Some